stock. They're, uh, even vacuum kilns have trouble with four inch thick stock. So the best way is just to rough turn it, which I'm going to do real quickly here, show you how I rough out boxes and then stick them somewhere in the shop for six months or a year and they dry out real well and, and they'll fit perfectly for as long as they live. Um, quarter sawn wood's the best. It will move the least and, uh, and obviously some woods are a lot more stable than others. So. But the main thing is really that it's dry. Um, on lid fit, you know, everybody wants a tight fitting lid, suction fitting lid. That's great. It's fun to do that. It's a challenge to do that. But not every box should have a really snug fitting lid. If you're going to make a box, I've made a lot of gifts that are for the cooks in my life that they, they use these special salts and stuff. You don't want to have to pick it up with two hands to peel a lid off or paper, paper clips or things like that. So just choose the fit for the box and, and what the box is going to be used for. Also some boxes, I brought up all of my rejects that never made it out of the shop for one reason or another. So we can talk about why some of these don't work. But if, if you make a box that has sort of, it's very rounded, if it's a real tight fitting lid, sometimes they're very difficult to get off. So just take those things into account when you're choosing the lid fit. Uh, I'll put it in the middle here and do the same thing and that gets you pretty close. Thank 
sent the bots all around and But I can shorten this up or whatever. This is not a very good piece of work either. I'm, I'm not sure I would actually use this for a box. As the other thing about parting off box pieces is um, you all know when you know the, the wood at the very center is moving pretty slow in terms of feet per minute compared to the outside and if you if you part them off you will oftentimes just really twist those end grains and it'll peel out and that can go in a sixteenth or an eighth of an inch it's really hard to sand out so when you're finishing a box top which we'll do in a minute you really don't want to part through all the way to the end you definitely want to cut those off if you're parting off in the middle it doesn't matter so much because you're going to hollow all that stuff out so you can go that way Now, I've been playing with this back hollowing cut, which is a lot of fun and it removes wood a lot of faster when you're processing a lot of these blanks to dry. Um, it does help save time. But you definitely want to wear your personal protective equipment when you're practicing this cut to start. Because uh, things do tend to jump off the lathe if you're not careful. But basically, you're going in. And then you're kind of coming up from your computer, you know. You can remove a tremendous amount of oil and it hurt. Or when you try and do it without that back support, don't ask me how I know that's not a good idea. <laughs> how was your tool with you? That's a spindle gouge, and you're really cutting, you're, you're kind of cutting like this, so the wood's coming this way, and, and you're basically just feeding it right into the wood, and it's just going to balance the here. In fact, it's a good idea to get rid of these before you dry them because that extra wood can cause a crack. There's just way more wood um, in the end here. But I don't always remember to do that. But I do want to get rid of it now because we're going to finish the top of this box jam chucked onto the base. And the less kind of bulk wood removal you have to do, the better. So. Same thing there, I, I don't want to peel that off because you can wind up taking a big chunk out of the middle there. Camera. Is that one over there? 
Sam, get on the stick. Put that dovetail back in and trim up these surfaces. So now to hollow this out, 
you can do many, many ways. You can use hollowing tools, you can drill it out, um, you can use a spindle gouge. A really nice way is to use a spindle gouge. And I am not going to be able to use my caress. A really good way is to use a spindle gouge. Remember the grain's running this way. So unlike side grain, you don't want to go from the largest diameter to the smallest diameter. You really want to cut. Cutting with the grain is going from the smallest diameter to the largest diameter. You want to kind of sweep out that way. So you can very easily do that with the spindle gouge. You can obviously use any of your hollowing tools. You can drill it out and use a, a ring tool or a hook tool. Those are fun to play with. Uh, I use I use hook tools a lot for bigger end grain vessels. So you can bigger than the tops. If you're going to have, um, you know, a tenon on the base that's going to fit into the top, you need to have enough wood that, that you have the, the material to make that work. Because I'm running a little scarce on wood on this side. I'm going to make it. sharpened on two sides, and um, so I can cut both the end grain and the side grain at the same time. And it's imperative that this is perfectly parallel, that, that, that they don't dovetail, or if they dovetail, you're just going to get it fit on the, on the very outer diameter, and obviously if it angles inward, you're not going to get a, a fit at all. So, First thing I do is just ballpark this, and you want to be a little bit above center too, because if you're at center or below center, you can wind up hitting the bottom of your scraper. So. I just ballpark that. Some people line up the front of the ways, but honestly that only works if this is perfectly parallel with this side. And after you sharpen them a few times, they're not. I tend to put it a fairly good sized tenon. Well, this is your mortise, but. Just kind of keep going up and down until it stops, and now you know you're at the widest diameter. And then pull it out. And actually, that's good. That's pretty much. Sometimes it'll get real loose on the outside, and you can tell you've got to go back in and, and cut that a little more deeper on the inside to make it square. And other times they won't come out, so you know that the, the rim is too narrow, and you have to you know, make, make a cut that compensates. Now, when I sand this, I would sand the inside here, and I would lightly sand the outside here, but I, I don't sand anything where it's going to attach, where the flanges meet, because, you know, there's that difference in density between the early wood and the late wood, and one will sand, fa sand faster than another, and they'll get a little bit out of round, even with just a little sanding. So, other than maybe a little 220 or something, um, I don't do anything more to that. So now, that will be good. And I don't know what we're going to do with this box, but maybe we'll put a little bead on top here. Is your roughing technique any different for the ones that you do the relief carving on? Obviously, you lose more meat, but is there something different you do to dry that? Uh, well, like this piece, this piece.
I, I'm not going to be able to get a saw in there. I'm trying to kind of take some extra wood up into the jaws. So I'm just going to part this off exactly what I told you not to do. But because we're going kind of in pretty deep, I think I have enough material, so it won't be a problem. Outside edge here, you can really get a pretty good idea. When I'm chucking up big pieces, you pile up those jaws. With these little pieces of wood, though, it really doesn't matter. They hold really, really firmly, and I've never had a problem. making a series of angle cuts and testing it too big so then I go down to make I know I can make that at least horizontal to there and then I make another angle cut getting close I can
that's just a tad bit too. Mm -hmm. Do you worry about grain when you put that on there? What's that? Do you worry about your grain matching up the grain when you put yes. it on there? No, that is really firmly on there. You're not going <laughs> to. <Yes. laughs> I have any problems with that falling off. Uh, famous last word. So I'm just going to rough shape this a little bit. Knockout bar. <laughs> yeah. Drill a hole in it. <laughs> All right, I've never had this problem before. <laughs> ah, the curse of you've the demo. Never, you've never done a demo with you before. <laughs> no, I haven't. Who's stronger than me? A rubber hammer. <laughs> wow. This is now a paperweight, not a box. <laughs> Why don't you lock the head stuff? I don't know if that's going to help me or not. Turn it to you. I hope you can see that. You might be able to give it a twist on it. No, actually, it's better, I think. I'm free. Yeah, I think it's like a Who's got. You want to do it? Cool. Yeah, it's coming. Use a handle on the tool. It's coming. It's coming. Here it goes. It's time for a coffee break, I think. Yeah, let's yeah, take that cone take the cone center off just in case. Take the cone stock, or take, take the tail stock. Sure, hand. So you don't yeah. kill it yourself. No, no, no. Or take the tail stock off. Because if you hit yourself, man, you're going to be a pain. Right? I don't so. Lock it, eight. Lock it. No. How do you lock it? Tail stock. <laughs> Looks like whoever gets it up is going to call King Arthur. <laughs> 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 oh, look at that. He shaves his beard and he's got no strength. <laughs> we need someone to add to Fella, come up here. It'll probably just slip off. <laughs> I loosened it up, though. <laughs>
is it doesn't just come down just to hit more. This one I am going to saw off because I don't want that. It's not the best curve in the world, but I'm um, going to take a little more time with that. So what I did forget to do is fit the lid. <laughs> this is what I was talking about when you design. This would not be a box that you could have a tight fitting lid on. More like an urn. <laughs> 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 so very quickly, I'll show you how I turn the bottoms. This is sort of the same, going through the same fit. <coughs> That's not the right piece. This has a lip on it. So I'm going to...